but I find it simplest to illustrate it by hearing without comment so that you can get into tune with what is. You can't really get out of tune with it, but we don't know that yet. <laughs> Maybe some of you do. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the show, Trucking Tendencies. I am your host, Trucking Tempo, or Tempo to it. I lost uh, access to that account, though, on Instagram, Tempo, the number two, it. Because my old phone number is attached to it, or whatever, but. Uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in and checking out this podcast um, inside the mind of today's truck driver, right? Um, trying to set up people to get on, but everybody's all being, I mean, when I was working with the big corp, a large corporation, obviously Heartland Express, a lot of them were kind of, they were, they were, they wanted to, you know, bite their tongue. They didn't want to speak or talk, but, um, for their own reasons, I guess they're hiding something. So they don't want to talk or they just don't feel comfortable. So I didn't push the issue with that. Um, but this one is, this one is on, I fucking won. I fucking beat it. I didn't beat it with like the, my TVC hired in Tyler Allen law firm beat the case for my speeding ticket, 57 and a 45. The dust settled. The dust has settled so I can talk about it now and Cheers. <laughs> I'm not driving. I'm doing my 10 hour sleep, my 10 hours rest break. But um, yeah, I won. Um, but before I get into that, I want to talk about my, my, the times that I've gotten away. Not gotten away, but I got let off with the warning. It is, it's, I've gotten away with one two and I beat the third and then the fourth one I actually had to go to fight it which was the 57 and the 45 but the first one was in a 2007 it was the pre-def Freightliner Columbia um pre-def Freightliner Columbia 2007 and I was I'm not sure if it was it was like at the very beginning of the career, I was heading southbound on either the five or the nine. One of these, I think it was the 99 or the five in California. And there was construction. So I, I, I'm not sure. I, I want to say it was the 99, but I was heading south and I'm not sure if I was loaded or empty. So I, I kind of forgot, um, those specific details but i do remember that it was an officer and i was he caught me he didn't tell me my speed but i was speeding and i was driving aggressively i was driving behind um i'm not sure it was like it was a vehicle it was a car it was a four-wheeler and i was tailgating him to pass another vehicle inside of a construction zone and that was really bad. He really could have hooked me up and that really could have started dinging my, my record. But he didn't. I guess it's it's obviously from um the way I look. You know, I got a I got a young face and I, I look really young and at that time I was 21, 20, 22, 22, maybe 23 years old. And and he said, Look, I'm um I'm going to cut you a, um, something like that. I'm going to cut you a break and I'm going to uh, give you a verbal warning, you know, slow it down. And it was a Latino uh, highway patrol and he really did look out. Thank you very much. You know, they're not out there to, to, to end your license, but they're out there to make the road safer. So that's respect. And that was the first one. The second one was in New Mexico the second warning that I got for speeding was in New Mexico that was going from Hatch 
New Mexico to Deming, New Mexico. And this was after delivering a load in in Las Lunas, New Mexico for tomatoes. I think we're running up uh, tomatoes or produce or something from from Rio Rico, Nogales, Arizona up to um, Las Lunas, New Mexico. Uh, cute little town. If you haven't been, it's, it's really cute. But um, from there, I was heading again from, from Hatch, New Mexico. It was like a connector. From Hatch, New Mexico, I think it's like the 26 or the 22, to Deming, New Mexico. And I was flying and I had no reason to be speeding. And he clocked me. He didn't tell me my, I, I'm not sure if he told me my speed, but I was going over, over the speed limit. And I think it was a 65, it might have been a 65, 55, um, that, that stretch of highway. But uh, he turned around and he stopped me and he said, you know, you're speeding, you gotta slow down and something like that along those lines. And he said, uh, oh, and I told, I apologize, you know, I'm like, I told him sorry and um, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have been speeding at all. Like I have no rush to get down to my appointment down there at uh, my next pickup. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I, and he, and he, he looked out for me too, New Mexico. He looked out for me and he said, well, I'm going to give you a verbal warning or something along those lines. And he, and he cut me loose. And that was the second time. And the third time I actually had to fight it. And I think this was with, this was with a Navajo police um, enforcement, Navajo police department, like the reservation police department. The reservation has their own separate polices, you know, so, so I was going from Las Lunas, New Mexico up to Farmington. I'm not sure if it was the 550, something like that, but then there's a connector from that over to Farmington to the Navajo uh, potato plant and he was coming towards me and I was going towards him and it was kind of towards sunrise so I, that's what I used with with my defense when I submitted it to TVC I said I said well in all fairness I was how can we guarantee you know like that he saw the correct the correct um you know, speed on, on the, on the, on his radar. So I'm not sure, but I won that one. And he, um, I got, I recorded, I record, you, you have to record it just for your own, your own sake to, you know, you can replay everything, what you said, what you didn't say. And it's healthy because it, it, it's, um, uh, there's no there's no faking what you said or didn't say when you record something so it's very important to you know watch what you say but also to record it because they might say something or you might say something that will you know that would throw out the case or dismiss the case and I feel like in that case I think he did he he was um, he was driving towards the sunrise so he was wearing sunglasses so he was he had an obscure vision probably of his radar and then i i recorded him saying and i sent this into tvc that he was talking about he's out here trying to catch speeding truckers so he had a he had an agenda that day you know and, but besides that oh man this thing's gonna start beeping and he's gonna pick up the noise Hold on, I'm going to pause and then continue. All right, back. Um, yeah, this truck is doing some beeping thing. It says transmission service requested. And I turn on the truck and it disappears. So that's coming down the pipeline. Anyway, the, uh, so yeah, so I beat it. I submitted it to TBC. I submitted the information and they beat the case and everything was going good so my third speeding warning was actually in a vehicle it was in a in a four-wheeler i was on a trip with uh two friends up to denver colorado for an expo it was the noco hemp expo i think it was the eighth 
Might have been the 9th. 2019, 2000, yeah, I think it was 2019. And it was, I was, uh, we, were, we were in, I think, what was it, Colorado? I think we were already in Colorado. Maybe Utah. But, um, yeah, my, we were in an SUV, we were in a Suburban, Chevy Suburban, and it was a rental, and I was trying to pass up a vehicle, uh, a semi-truck on the right, and he was actually speeding too, so that, no, he wasn't speeding, he was probably hitting the speed limit, he was probably hitting like, what's the speed limit up there, 75, 70, 75? And I had to go 80, 85 to pass them, you know, without, without delay, without hanging around, you know, the side of the vehicle, I had to pass them going X, you know, over the speed limit. And then right when I was doing that, right when I finished passing them, there was the highway patrol. He lit me up and he came after me and he stopped me and I pulled me over and he, you know, you know how fast you were going and all that stuff so he said uh let me see your license and i showed him my license and he saw that it was class a license and he he probably knew that it was gonna really mess up my thing and i i told him a, i was passing the truck because you know like oh i needed to pass the truck like i didn't know he was going that fast like it was like that that's the the gist of it, like I'm trying to pass this truck that's actually going the speed limit, so I have to go out where like, I guess he understood that, but yeah, he gave me a verbal warning and, and that was the second time. Or no no, that was the first, second, th third, fourth, fourth, and then the fifth. So the fifth time is a charm. Third time's a charm? Well I think I just ran out of luck. I for sure ran out of luck with that. No more speeding. But it's not I never speed this this third this this uh fourth time that I got I got uh pulled over and pulled over and uh clocked at 57 miles per hour. So here's a scenario again. It was actually on the run, on the same route, the 26 hatch to Deming, New Mexico at the very end stretch. This was on a Sunday it was on the weekend, maybe Saturday or a Sunday, and I picked up watermelon. Picked up watermelon. I was all happy and, and, you know, going home to deliver and have some time off. And I was loaded to the, I was, I was topped off with the, with the weight. I was up there 78, 79,000 pounds. And, I was coming again from Hatch to Deming, into Deming, and I guess from the from that period of time when I was out there, it's gotten a lot worse with speeding and trucking, and there must have been some sort of accident because they were really enforcing um, speed limit within this section. It was um, they gave you two marker two markers, one forty five, two or one. I already forgot. I think there's one, one for sure saying there's a 45 mile per hour speed zone up ahead. And then the 45 mile per hour marker that begins the zone and that zone. Well, I was all happy, like on the weekend, like really not paying attention and not thinking that I was about to hap this was about to happen. Um, so he clocked me he clocked me at 57 in a 45 and he didn't he he was a good like a straight up guy like a gentleman like like he was a cool dude like he was an he was an officer's officer he was a deputy's deputy you know he was a stand-up dude and he told me to, you know, step down from the vehicle, from the truck, and I stepped down. He's like, you know how fast you were going? I'm like, no, I'm like, 57 and a 
57. I'm like, really? I, I saw 55. So I think from when I saw him and when I when I seen his headlight or his uh, his lights on top of his vehicle, it, I, I pumped the brakes and I think I pushed it and it said 55. And, and I told him 55, you know, but 55 and a 45, that's 10 over. It's still, I think it was three points on the record if found guilty, but was not found guilty. Uh, dismissed and it was our, the attorney again I think it was Tyler Allen from TVC they hire them to go represent you for citations and tickets and he I want to say that he he his defense the defense was like what I saw and what I witnessed was that it was kind of ambushy it was kind of like an ambush and he was tailgating. He was tailgating a SUV or some sort of vehicle, a large vehicle, SUV, maybe a van. Really close, probably like he was rubbernecking another vehicle, so I couldn't see him inside of that 45 mile per hour zone. And as soon as he passed me, he, you know, hit me with his radar. And then he immediately turned around and pulled me over. I pulled over. I started slowing down before he actually pulled me over. Because I already knew that it was a there was a storm coming. So I pulled over and I you know, that all happened. And submitted again all the information to the court. I asked him, you know, when we he when he was trained to get the training for the you know, to count, to use the the radar detection system and and all that and you know all that stuff and when was it last calibrated and stuff like that and again recorded it but you know he had a good answer he's like this this gets calibrated every every day so there's nothing wrong with the calibration but as far as him training um, on that calibrated on that you know radar system I don't know I guess you only need it once and it's like oh you know how to ride a bike okay you know how to ride a bike you don't need training anymore so anyway that happened after that and i guess they saved me three the money wasn't the problem the the what the attorney saves you is on the um, the points on your license you become a you collect too many points the dmv goes ahead and looks at it and suspends your license Suspends your license, which is another or ordeal that I'm dealing with right now in, in Arizona f for another story. I think this, I already talked about this one in Breaking the Law, but this was another one Breaking the Law, but 40, 57 and a 45, dismissed, case dismissed, and saved me on the points, and now I'm only worried about this other one. The, the It's actually a criminal case for running a scale in the state of Arizona on a port of entry. They wrote port of entry on the citation on the criminal ticket, which it was not a port of entry. It was a port of exit. Let's get that straight too. But um, 700 bucks, I think, for Tyler Allen or another similar law firm to represent me in court for a criminal case like this. I already went to the pretrial and the... Um, not pre-trial, the preliminary hearing or something, the hearing, and that saved me 700 bucks, and now they want another 700 bucks for them to represent me to go to trial, which I think I'm just going to avoid and tell them, no, I'll just let you, I don't know, anyway. Um, but uh, for those that stuck till the end, I got a funny one. I got a crazy one. Um, Pablo beat everybody. Pablo won. This guy, um, I think he was 20 years old. He got his license when he was 18. And he got, check this out. He got a 78 in a 45. 78 miles per hour in a 45 in California. And he was loaded. They, the, I believe that's a super speeder and you get automatically suspended 
for life or something. I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm not a speeder, but I'm not excessive speeder. And that's what happened with, with Pablo. Um, Pablo, and he's going to fight it. I think uh, what he said was that the CHP looked out for him and said that I'm going to put you were doing 65 in a 45 or maybe he dropped it down to 55 in a 45. I'm not sure which one, which of which he did, but he's like, he, I'm going to drop it down a little to help you out, but it's not really going to help you out. I'm going to take it easy. As soon as I, I was done talking, I'm going to take it easy. Easy does it. Easy does it. You don't need to be speeding in these big things. So, so that's that story. Thanks for tuning in, and um, I appreciate the listens and likes and sharing. I'm trying to upload this onto other other uh, platforms. What is it? Apple, iTunes, and and YouTube to make them YouTube Shorts. But um, I cannot be messing with my phone and uploading videos and tinkering with my cell phone when I'm driving. So, you know, the less you, you mess with. Anyway, thanks for listening again, and um, eyes on the road.